The following worship service is paid for by Main Street Living. God's Word is not always comfortable. God's Word does not always tell us what we want to hear. But it does always tell us what we need to hear. It was not comfortable. Jesus came into this world to serve sinful human beings by suffering and dying on a cross so that you might be forgiven. The worship service will begin after opening hymn. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the first Sunday of Lent comes from the book of Deuteronomy, the 26th chapter, beginning with the first verse. When you come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you for an inheritance and have taken possession of it and live in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground 
which you harvest from your land that the Lord your God is giving you, and you shall put it in a basket, and you shall go to the place that the Lord your God will choose to make his name to dwell there. And you shall go to the priest who is in office at that time and say to him, I declare today to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our fathers to give us. Then the priest shall take the basket from your hand and set it down before the altar of the Lord your God. And you shall make response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my father. And he went down into Egypt and sojourned there, few in number. And there he became a nation, great, mighty, and populous. And the Egyptians treated us harshly and humiliated us and laid on us hard labor. Then we cried to the Lord, the God of our fathers. And the Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. And the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm with great deeds of terror, with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And behold, now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground which you, O Lord, have given me. And you shall set it down before the Lord your God and worship before the Lord your God. And you shall rejoice in all the good that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house, you and the Levite and the sojourner who is among you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading for this morning comes from the book of Romans, the 10th chapter, beginning with the second half of the 8th verse. The word is near you, in your mouth, And in your heart, that is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gospel according to Luke, the fourth chapter, beginning with the first verse. And Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness for 40 days, being tempted by the devil. And he ate nothing during those days. And when they were ended, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. And Jesus answered him, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone. And the devil took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time and said to him, To you I will give all this authority and their glory, for it has been delivered to me, and I give it to whom I will. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. And Jesus answered him, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. And Satan took Jesus to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you. And on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against the stone. And Jesus answered him, It is said, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And when the devil had ended every temptation... He departed from him until an opportune time. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. 
The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into the heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please pray with me. Lord God, may the words of my mouth, may the meditations, may the thoughts of all of our hearts and all of our minds be pleasing in your sight. Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Today is the first Sunday in Lent. Lent is an interesting season in the church here. Lent is a, a rather morbid season when you think about it. During the season of Lent, over and over again, you are told that you are a sinner. During the season of Lent, over and over again, you are told that you could never do enough to earn forgiveness of your sin. During the season of Lent, over and over again, you are told that because of your sin, you are destined for death. As I said, it's a rather morbid season. Uh, the colors of the pyramids on our altar are now that deep, dark purple. Uh, the songs that we sing are now often in a minor key. And again, there's that message. You're a sinner. You're not good enough. You're going to die. The message of Lent is a message that many of us may not want to hear. Uh, how often... Do you want to be told that you aren't good enough? I remember a time in college I had screwed up big time, had done something I should not have done, and it didn't take long for my mom to find out. And suddenly the phone rang, there was my mom, my mom let me have it over and over again, for what seemed like forever. I can't believe you did this. How can I ever trust you again? What's wrong with you? You better get up bright and early tomorrow morning because your dad is coming up to see you. It was not, to say the least, a pleasant conversation. I had disappointed my mom, and now my dad was coming up, and from what I could tell, he was angry. From what I knew, I was as good as dead. And there was a part of me that was tempted to run away. I was a failure. 
I was never going to be able to earn back my parents' respect, and as far as I could tell, as a dead man anyway. So instead of staying and having to live with this constant reminder of my sin, wouldn't it be easier just to turn away and not have to hear it? So what I did, was it really all that bad anyway? Brothers and sisters in Christ, that's the temptation when it comes to our sin. God's law, over and over again, reminds us of our sin. It reminds you that you could never earn God's forgiveness. It reminds you that you are as good as dead. And the temptation is to run away. I don't need to hear this. What I did really isn't all that bad. And so oftentimes we turn our backs on God and his message. And then we find someone else who will tell us what we want to hear. In today's gospel reading from the gospel of Luke... Jesus is in the wilderness, and he's been without food for 40 days. Jesus is hungry. Jesus is thirsty. He's exhausted. He's desperate for relief. And so Satan comes up to Jesus, and he starts telling Jesus things that he might want to hear. Jesus, I know that you are hungry. I also know that you are no ordinary man. You could easily tell these stones to become bread, and they will. You don't have to hunger. You don't have to suffer. Tell these stones to become bread and get yourself something to eat. Jesus, you do not deserve such a humble existence in this world. You are the eternal Son of God. You should not be serving these people. These people should be serving you. Bow down and worship me, and I will give you all the kingdoms of the world. Jesus, didn't your heavenly Father promise that you never have to suffer? Didn't he say he wouldn't even let you stub your toe on a rock? Throw yourself down from the top of this temple and make God prove it. Make God send his angels down from heaven to rescue you. These were tempting words. Jesus was hungry in that wilderness. He was suffering in that wilderness. And it was the Holy Spirit. It was God himself who had brought Jesus into that wilderness in the first place. It was tempting for Jesus just to turn his back on it all. Why hunger any longer? Why suffer any longer? But where you and I too often give in to that temptation and we turn our backs on God's word whenever it says what we don't want to hear, Jesus remains faithful. Jesus holds fast to God's word and he resists the temptation. Satan says, turn these stones into bread. And Jesus says, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone. Satan tells Jesus to bow down and worship him. Jesus again responds. He says, it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Satan tells Jesus to throw himself down from the top of the temple And test God's promise, Jesus responds, It is said, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Time and time again, Jesus is tempted to turn his back on God's word for something more comfortable. And time and time again, Jesus resists that temptation. He holds fast to God's word. God's word is not always comfortable. God's Word does not always tell us what we want to hear. But it does always tell us what we need to hear. The whole reason that Jesus came into this world was to serve and to suffer. 
It was not comfortable. Jesus came into this world to serve sinful human beings by suffering and dying on a cross so that you might be forgiven and have life in him. That was Jesus' entire purpose in this world as he fasted those 40 days. And it wasn't comfortable. Being reminded of that purpose may not have been what Jesus wanted to hear. But it is what he needed to hear. Because it was his entire purpose for coming. Which adds a bit of a twist to the whole message of Lent. Because during these next 40 days... We might not always like what we hear. We might not want to hear about our sin and our failures over and over again. But it's a message that we need to hear. Because it prepares us for an even better message. I'll never forget that morning. It was about a quarter to seven in the morning. And I was in my dorm room looking out the window. When sure enough, there's my dad's pickup pulling into the parking lot. And I didn't know for sure what to expect, but I was fairly certain there'd be more of the same. You're such a disappointment. I can't believe you did this. How can I ever trust you? But when I went out to meet my dad, that's not what happened. First, my dad didn't say much at all, but then we started walking around campus. We talked about the weather. We talked about the drive up, things like that. And it wasn't until lunch where I got frustrated. I looked at my dad. And I said, aren't you going to yell at me? Isn't that why you came up here? To to remind me that I am a disappointment and a failure? And my dad, he just looked at me, he shook his head. And he said, son, I did not come up here to yell at you. I came here because I love you. I came here... Because I was worried about you, I wanted to make sure you were okay. I did not come up here to hurt you. I came here to help you. During the season of Lent, we are reminded of our sin. Not so that our lives will become so overwhelmed with guilt that we're ready to give up. But so that we can be appointed to the one who has come to help us. During the season of Lent, we are reminded that we are loved. God loves you so much that he packed up his bags, came down to this earth to be with you. In the person of Christ, God has come into this world to be with you and to help you, to save you from your sin, to take your place, to die your death. Are you a sinner? Yes, you are. Could you ever do enough to earn God's forgiveness? No, you cannot. But you don't have to do anything because Jesus has done the work for you. And where we time and time again fail, Jesus has succeeded. No longer are you destined for death. Jesus did that work for you too, dying your death on the cross. So maybe, just maybe, that message of Lent isn't so morbid after all. Because as God's law does its work in your heart during these next 40 days, it prepares you for the gospel. Because during the season of Lent, over and over again, you are told that you have a Savior who loves you. And during the season of Lent... Over and over again, you are told that you are valuable. So valuable to God that he was willing to die for you. And during the season of Lent, over and over again, you are told that your sins are forgiven. No longer are you destined for death. You are destined for life with your God and Savior who loves you forever. Today is the first Sunday of Lent, during these next 40 days, may you hold fast to God's word, and may you receive these words that you need to hear. Amen. Let us pray. 
O Lord God, you led your ancient people through the wilderness and brought them to the promised land. Guide the people of your church that following our Savior, we may walk through the wilderness of this world toward the glory of the world to come. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray the prayer Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now we receive the blessing of our God. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift up his face, shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. I'm Pastor Adam Olean, Associate Pastor here at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Lincoln, Nebraska. We ask you to help support our ministry. You can send donations to 3825 Wildbriar Avenue, Lincoln, Nebraska, 68516. We thank you for watching this morning, and we pray God's continued blessings upon you through His Son, Jesus Christ, our, His crucified and risen Lord and Savior. Amen. Send your comments and contributions to Main Street Living Lincoln, 3825 Wildbriar Lane, Lincoln, Nebraska, 68516. Or visit us online at MainStreetLiving.com. This has been a production of Main Street Living Incorporated in conjunction with the Nebraska District of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod and its member churches.